In the previous lessons, we have derived the governing equation for fluid dynamics, the Navier-Stokes equations. The original Navier-Stokes equations from uh, the 1840s only included mass and momentum equations, while today we also consider the conservation of energy into the equations set. In general, the Navier-Stokes equations are five coupled nonlinear partial differential equations that are solved for five unknowns. The three velocity components and two of the state variables, such as pressure, density, or energy, they are connected by an equation of state. So, now that we have a set of equations, how do we apply them to solve a real-world problem? A mathematical model requires five basic elements. First is the problem statement. We need to define what is the problem that we want to solve. Second, we introduce modeling assumptions that will simplify the problem and we modify the model equations accordingly. In order to close the model, we need to describe the flow conditions on its boundaries, introducing boundary conditions. And if the problem is unsteady, we also need to introduce an initial condition. These five elements will let us obtain a well-posed problem that will provide a unique solution. Let's analyze each one of these components in detail. Let's start with the problem statement. We want to define what is the problem that we want to analyze. So first, we need to define the geometry of the fluid flow problem and its boundaries. Let's consider a racing car. We first define the geometry of the car. Then we define the flow field that surrounds the car. We define the properties of the fluid, such as density, viscosity, and so on. Next, we define the flow conditions. For example, the velocity of the flow, its pressure and temperature. Last, we define what the goals for our analysis are. In this example, we want to analyze downforce generated by the rear wing and the drag force acting on the car in order to improve the aerodynamics properties of the car and win the race. Once the problem statement is defined, we can introduce modeling assumptions based on the phenomena characteristics in order to simplify the model. For example, a water jet that exits the nozzle at large speed won't be affected by gravity during its initial path. We can then remove the gravity effects from our analysis. Another assumption could be to simplify the analysis moving from a full 3D model into a 2D version of it. For example, to get a quick estimate of the downforce generated by the spoiler of the sports car we saw earlier, we can just take a section of the rear wing and analyze a 2D version of it. In this way, we can get a quick estimate of the downforce generated by the entire spoiler. Based on the assumption we introduced, we can then modify the Navier-Stokes equations accordingly. The last step of the process is to define the fluid domain and the boundary and initial conditions. So, let's assume that we have a T-junction in a pipe system. Our fluid domain will be the water contained in the junction, with a need to specify a set of boundary conditions to define how the fluid will behave. First of all, 
The liquid is contained by the pipes that act as walls, avoiding the fluid to be dispersed. Now we have three sides that are still open and additional boundary conditions must be specified. Depending on the condition specified, we will have a unique solution for the mathematical model. As you can see here, changing the direction of the fluid crossing the boundaries, we will have a different solution. For unsteady solutions, we also have to specify an initial condition. If we assume to have cold water as initial condition and then hot water entering the system, we will see the system heating up in time. Initial conditions and boundary conditions provide a unique solution to our mathematical model. The Navier-Stokes equations are a set of nonlinear partial differential equations, or PDEs. Depending on the flow condition and the physics that we are analyzing, the Navier-Stokes equations can be any of the PDE's conditions. In viscid incompressible steady state flows problems are an elliptical problem, like the mixing T we just analyzed under the assumption of steady state flow. In case of a viscous subsonic unsteady flow, like the exhaust jet of a commercial airplane engine, we have a parabolic problem. For supersonic flows, the problem becomes hyperbolic. It is also common to have mixed problems, namely regions of fluid in a subsonic and supersonic regimes, like for example in detonations where the supersonic expansion happens in quiescent air. This can be typically seen in construction demolitions and in some powerful volcano eruptions. The boundary conditions for velocity at walls are common for all problems. It has been observed and confirmed experimentally that for viscous fluid, the velocity of the fluid particles on solid boundaries is zero relative to the boundary. This is called no slip condition. For rarefied gas flows and for inviscid flows approximations, the fluid can move tangentially to the wall. This condition is called no penetration condition that states that the fluid cannot cross a solid boundary, meaning that the component of the flow velocity normal to the solid boundary must be zero. Other boundary conditions will be introduced for specific fluid problems as they arise in future lessons. In this lecture, we analyzed how to set up our mathematical model in order to analyze a specific problem and obtain a unique solution.